It is HN Live today. We are on location here at the Rocky Mountain Classic, the 12th annual. It's our fourth year doing it, I'll tell you. We look forward to it as a group every year. There are scouts everywhere, current and former NHL players, much like Colin Forbes. Over 300 games played in the NHL and has been uh, retired for a little while now. And Colin, appreciate you joining us. And you and I were just joking off air about uh, now you're kind of dad slash Uber driver in life, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I got three boys, uh, 16, 14, and 12. So uh, running them around a rink to rink to rink, coaching a little bit. Uh, I do a little bit of power skating coaching, so I always joke around that my crossovers are better now than when I played. <laughs> Colin, uh, it's just great to have you know events like this going on. We have former NHL players, and we've talked throughout the years. Kind of the goal, the dream almost for a dad is once you retire, your young ones kind of start to follow in your footsteps a little bit and be able to see your kids play hockey. How special is that for you to be around and? and help coach them. Yeah, you know, it. I, I grew up with a dream, just like every kid in Canada normally does, is a dream to play in the NHL, and I was fortunate enough to, to be able to, to fulfill that dream. Um, and, you know, I have a passion for, for the sport so and, and a love for it. So to share that with not only just my children, but other kids that I've coached through the years is, is really special to me. Uh, to see them develop, you know, I have a, I have a boy that, uh, my oldest boy is 16, and I've coached some of him and his buddies since they were six. And to see them become young men, young developed hockey players, it's really gratifying just as a, as a hockey person, but uh, also just as a, like a, a mentor almost. Now, it's the U15 AAA tournament, and Garner, his youngster, playing on the uh, Northwest uh, Calgary Flames program. And as you get to watch him, you know, people always say, do you see a little bit of yourself in some of each guy? You, out of your three boys, is there a Colin, maybe a smattering of all three in there? Yeah, you know, it's uh, a little bit of everything in all three. Um, you know, I tell them all that uh, they're way better uh, at their ages than I was at their age. Uh, you know, kids these days are just uh, faster, more skilled. It's it's amazing to watch them. And then watching these kids that are, you know, 13, 14, 15 year olds, you know, wheeling around the ice with, at a high speed and, and high hockey IQ, high skill. It's it's really cool to watch. And then seeing your own kid out there is, uh, you know, it. it a little sensitive, sensitive to it, uh, you know, it makes you tear up a little bit when you think about it to see, you know, them loving the game like you did, uh, you know, growing up. Yeah, you almost took the words out of my mouth. I was going to ask you about, you know, AJHL, 1993-94. He went there, played in the Western Hockey League, and then, you know, had a great pro career, over 300 games in the NHL. When you look at how the game has changed since you played back in the day in the AJHL, minor hockey, to where it is now, what blows your mind the most about how the game has evolved? Oh, geez, it's it's the skill, you know, the skill and the speed. Um, you know, they're they're uh, pushed by the coaches to be creative. Um, you know, use their use their high skill to 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 create offensive opportunities. You know, you see you see the NHL now. They you know like a Kale McCarr on defense. Well, when I played, there was not many of those uh, that were able to walk the line, toe drag guys at the blue line because if you did that, you got in, in trouble. So uh, now it's like promoting that game, promoting that skill, and and wanting them to use their their natural abilities to be able to create stuff. That's probably the biggest thing that I see. Do you remember, did you have showcase events like this in your minor hockey? These are so common now in hockey and tremendous opportunity for scouts to get a look at some athletes. Did you have a lot of these uh, back in the day when you were playing? So I, I, I tell a story, it's funny, I grew up in BC and I grew up in all small towns and when I was, uh, when I was this age I was playing in Fort St. John, BC. And uh, you know there wasn't a lot of scouts traveling up north to, to watch that type that hockey. So we we ended went, went to a, a turn a big tournament in Edmonton, and uh, I had a pretty good tournament there. And then all of a sudden it kind of you know you start getting letters in the mail and people reaching out to you after games that uh, you know I was like oh what's this all about you know I didn't even know that there's such a thing as a Bantam draft when uh, when it was my year you know and then it kind of. We, we moved to Shrove Park. I played a year of midget AAA in Shrove Park, a year in the AJ. I got drafted to the NHL out of the AJHL, which at that time wasn't uh, wasn't something that happened a lot, and it just was a whirlwind. And then next next thing I know, you know, it's uh, three years later. I'm playing the Stanley Cup Finals against the Detroit Red Wings. You know, it's just uh, I, I always try and tell people that it. it Everybody develops at different stages of their lives. Every opportunity has come at different stages. So you know, if you're 15 years old and you know maybe that opportunity hasn't come, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean it's not going to come at 16, 17, or 18 years old.
And there's so many options out there in across hockey. And we've talked to Craig Button every year. We do the World Junior A Challenge. He talks about the opportunities where things have changed so much. Is there, is there a piece of advice that you maybe share with your boys when it comes to their journey and what their goals are for hockey that to kind of help them along the way? Uh, yeah, what's my advice to them? Uh, my advice to my, my kids is just, you know, enjoy the game. Uh, play it because uh, you love it. Um, you know, it's the team atmosphere that's going to help them in life d down the road. You know, I've, I was lucky enough to play 15 years of pro hockey and then I can take that team mentality into the, uh, the workforce after and be able to work within a team that way. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. If, it, if, if you can get some education, you know, you, you just set your sights, play, play the game because you love it. You know, don't, don't ever, I don't ever want them to go to the rink and think they have to go. Uh, play because you love it and want to be better and want to be the best possible player that you can be. Colin, one final question for you. Really appreciate your time. Is there a memory? You know, everybody I once asked that pro player, is there one thing that kind of sticks out in your career that you kind of hang on to or a couple of them you can share with us? Oh, geez. Well, a couple memories. Well, I remember when I was drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers, um, you know, at that time, uh, how long ago was the, the draft was actually in Hartford. <laughs> so that's how long ago it was in the 94. Um, but I, I didn't go because uh, I didn't, like, I, I read it in the hockey news, but I met with their head scout, Jerry Melnick, about two weeks later in Sherwood Park. And, uh, you know, he asked me a question. He goes, you know, when could you see yourself in the NHL? And at that time, I was uh, 18 years old. I hadn't played a game in the WHL yet, and uh, you know, I looked at him and I'm like, "This is a trick question." And I just kind of said, "I'm like, oh, like maybe seven, eight years from now." And he looked at me straight faced, and he just said, "I could see you in three. And he must have seen and believed in me, uh, and that helped me believe in myself. Um, and I still remember that, you know, to, to to help these kids believe in themselves and and never get too down. You know, I always say roller coasters, right? Don't get too high, don't get too low. Uh, you know, stay, stay even keel. And uh, that's probably the biggest thing that I take away is that first uh, initial uh, kind of interview, I guess you'd say, into the NHL. Well, really appreciate your time from New Westminster, BC, right through the pros all the way here to the Rocky Mountain Classic. Colin, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.